Revelation chapter number 20. We'll begin reading verse number 7. The Bible says, And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison, and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were open, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell was cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And here's one of the saddest verses in all the Bible. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Let's pray. Father, we sure do bless your holy name. Lord, this whole day, you've been so sweet in the house of God. God, we certainly thank you for the good singing tonight. Lord, how our hearts have been just blessed. And then, Father, the good testimonies. Lord, we've been blessed again. And God, I know when we get to heaven, we're going to sing a song, a new song that's never been sung. And God, I know when we get to heaven, there's going to be a lot of people praising you. So we got practiced up on that a little bit tonight. God, we thank you for the Word of God and the reading of the Word of God. Now, Father, I pray you'd bless. I pray you'd use this unworthy vessel. I pray for power and unction from on high. Father, we pray for our dear brother, Brother James. Lord, transparent, been oppressed. God, I pray that you'd hedge him in. I pray that, God, uh, you'd bind the powers of hell and, God, uh, You'd send the devil on the run. I pray you'd help our brother. And I pray you'd give him deliverance and victory from these evil spirits that have been lurking around. I pray for his boy Jake, that we'd see Jake get back in church. And I pray for his dear daughter. You'd help her and her family. And I pray for that family member that he's got that's a, a, a full-blown into witchcraft. I pray you'd save him. You'd break the powers of the devil in their life. And God, I pray that God, before long, they'd be sitting here in church worshiping God, praising God, and winning others that are caught up in that cult and that wickedness. Uh, now, God, do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. Uh, help your people, and God will bless you for it. For it's in Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. Amen. We find in verses 7 through 9 the discourse uh, that will happen after the millennial reign of Christ. Uh, I can't get bogged down here, but listen, uh, uh, the Lord Jesus is literally coming back to this earth, uh, and he's going to rule and reign uh, from the throne of David for a thousand years. Uh, we that have been saved, uh, that are part of the bride of Christ, uh, will rule and reign with him uh, for those thousand years. Uh, hey, that time, uh, there'll be no more death. Uh, there'll be no more sickness. Uh, he will come, uh, and the lion will lay down with the lamb. Uh, uh, the child will play over the hole of the asp. Uh, there will be no hurt and no death. Uh, hey, what a blessing to know that. Uh, hey, old slew foot, the devil's going to be bound for a thousand years. Uh, 
But after that thousand years, uh, he's going to be loose for a season. Uh, and he's going to go out and he's going to tempt all the people uh, that are born uh, of natural man during that thousand years. Uh, you see, my dear friends, during the great tribulation, uh, there will be 144,000 Jews uh, that come out of the great tribulation period who do not take the mark of the beast. Uh, and Revelation 7 says a great number that no man can number. Uh, I believe they'll be coming out of India and China uh, where they've not heard the gospel like America has. Uh, but folks uh, who put their faith in whatever God institutes uh, as a means to come to Him during the tribulation period, uh, there'll be a great number. And those people start having children and children and children uh, for a thousand years. Uh, and Satan's going to tempt those children because uh, they've never been tempted. Uh, they've never been tempted to sin even though they still have a sin nature in them uh, and he'll tempt them uh, and he'll lead many of them away from the God and the Lord Jesus uh, and here we find uh, uh, that God will send fire from heaven uh, and devour them and then hallelujah a new heaven and a new earth uh, so we see the discourse uh, look in verse number 10 uh, I want you to see the devil and the devil you find him right there Listen, you'll find him in the garden. You can find him working in men's lives uh, all the way till chapter 20 of the book of Revelation. Let me go on record as saying I hate the devil. I hate the devil. I hate that we even got to bring him up. But I hate him. Uh, we find that the devil uh, is a deceiver. Look in verse 10. And the devil that deceived them... Uh, Hey, uh, he's a liar. Uh, we brought it out Wednesday night. He's the father of it. Uh, the devil never tell you the truth. Uh, at best, he'll tell you a partial truth. Uh, but he always wants you to doubt uh, real truth and doubt the Lord. Uh, He's uh, the devil. He's a deceiver. Uh, in verse 11 we find uh, uh, the day of judgment when the great white throne uh, is ushered in. Uh, this is the Bema seat. Uh, listen, uh, I'm glad I'm saved. Uh, I'm glad I'm going to the judgment seat of Christ. Uh, I was judged for sin at Calvary. Uh, and at the judgment seat of Christ, uh, I'm going to give an account of the deeds done in my body since I've been saved. Uh, whether they've been good or whether they've been evil, I'll be judged for my works uh, but here in Revelation 20 uh, this is the Bema seat uh, they're not seeing the compassionate Lord uh, they're seeing the one uh, whose eyes are as flames of fire uh, whose countenance is as brass uh, whose hair is white as wool uh, whose voice is as many thunderings uh, hey the one who's got lightning behind his throne uh, we're talking about the Lord God Almighty uh, uh, Jesus Christ sitting on the throne to judge them uh, and he's not judging their works he's judging their sin right. Amen. my dear friends those who refuse to let Jesus pay for their sin will be judged sentenced and have to pay for their own sins uh, forevermore look in verses 12 and 13 you find the books and you find the dead small and great stand for God right now they're in hell and they think that's bad. But then they're going to be brought before God and then cast into the lake of fire. We see death in verse 14. Death and hell delivered into the lake of fire. And then damnation in verse 15. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Hmm? What a terrible, terrible seen that will be you know why we ought to pray for sinners you know why you ought to witness to sinners because we'll be the jury that day and we'll watch people that we knew who never got saved be cast off into the lake of fire God help us to get a burden for sinners I'm interested in verse number 10 and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Let me say it again. The devils that deceived them is going to be cast into the lake of fire. And the Bible said that he'll be tormented day and night forever 
and ever. I want to preach with God's help on uh, that verse right there uh, and take that devil. Huh? Hey, uh, he's messed with you and he's messed with me and he's messed with everybody. Uh, but hey, in accordance to God's word, uh, there's coming a day uh, when the devil's going to get his due. Uh, hey, when he's going to be cast into the lake of fire and brimstone uh, and he'll be tormented day and night uh, forever uh, and ever. Uh, I say take that devil. Uh, hey, you may be messing with us one day right now uh, and you may be uh, tormenting right now, uh, but there's coming a day neighbor uh, uh, when the devil uh, is going to be cast into the lake of fire uh, forever uh, and ever uh, and I say take that devil uh, I say hallelujah to the Lamb of God uh, the devil's going to the lake of fire uh, can I say for every stinking lie ever told uh, he's going to be cast into the lake of fire uh, forever uh, and ever uh, and I say take that devil uh, hey uh, for hey, every scorch dart he ever threw at one of God's youngins. Uh, he's going to be thrown into the lake of fire uh, and tormented day and night uh, forever and ever. Uh, I say take that devil. Uh, hey, uh, for every snare he ever placed. Uh, listen, uh, he's going to be thrown into the lake of fire uh, and be tormented day and night uh, forever and ever. Uh, I say take that devil. Uh, every trap, uh, every temptation every tear among the wheat he's gonna pay for it in the lake of fire forever and ever I say take that devil hey for every saint of God he ever tormented he's gonna be thrown in the lake of fire hey brother James he may be messing with you tonight but forever and ever he's gonna be in the lake of fire tormented Wishing he'd never heard of James Bird. Uh, I say take that devil. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, for every sin he ever caused. Uh, he's going to the lake of fire. Uh, every murder. Uh, every rape. Uh, every theft. Uh, every drunkenness. Uh, every drug. Uh, every fornication. Uh, every adultery. Uh, every idolatry. Uh, all pride. Uh, all envy. Uh, all lust, uh, all hatred, uh, all bitterness, uh, all homosexuality, uh, all transgender, uh, all men can give babies, uh, and every other sin he's caused, uh, he's going to the lake of fire, uh, and I say, take that devil. Listen, uh, for every sore bruise he's been in Jesus' heel. I say, take that devil. Listen, in Genesis 3.15, the Lord told Adam and Eve, He told the devil, He said that Adam and Eve's seed was coming and that he would bruise Satan's head and Satan would bruise his heel. How many times do you think the Lord's heel's been bruised? Because the sorry, no good devil. But neighbor, is it not going to be joyous to see the Lord call for the archangels? Maybe some cherubim come and bind him. But this time he's not going to the bottomless pit, Brother Clinton. They're going to bind him and cast him in the lake of fire forever and ever. Hey, Brother Ron, wouldn't it be a blessing if they drag him by each and every one of us? Uh, and we get to kick him uh, in his head. Uh, wouldn't it be a blessing if we get to take a shot at him uh, for all the shots he's taken at us? Uh, but there's coming a day, neighbor, uh, we're going to watch uh, the one in whom the nations did fear, uh, the one uh, who caused so much wickedness in this world uh, be cast in a lake of fire uh, and tormented day and night forever and ever. Uh, I say, take that devil. Uh, for every soul he ever deceived with false religion, false Bible, false doctrines, false preachers, false Christians, false, 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 everyone. He's going to the lake of fire. For that crowd that had 
uh, the, the whole series on hell where they laughed at hell. And he caused that. For the whole crowd that he got them caught up with 40 days of purpose instead of putting Jesus as Lord of their life. For every false movement, he's going to the lake of fire. I say, take that devil, huh? For every split he ever caused. Every split in every church and every split in every home, he's going to the lake of fire. Are you hearing me tonight? He's not getting away with anything. The devil is a divider. The Holy Ghost is a uniter. And the devil wants to divide. He wants to divide your home. He wants to divide my home. He wants to cause nothing but disharmony and uh, uh, fighting and arguing. Uh, he wants to cause nothing but bitterness and heartache. Uh, the devil's behind it all. Uh, he wants to split every home up. Uh, he wants uh, mommies raising children. Uh, uh, two mommies or two daddies raising children. Uh, he wants to make a mockery of the home because uh, God... God made the home even before he made the church. Uh, hey, and he hates the church. Uh, Jesus loved the church and gave himself for it. Uh, and the devil hates the church. Uh, and he wants to cause a split in every church. Uh, he wants to divide hearts in our church. Uh, hey, the devil hates what happened around here today. Uh, hey, he wants to tear this thing up. Uh, he wants to have brother against brother. Uh, sister against sister. Uh, 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 parishioners against the preacher right? he's just all about uh, uh, making a mess of things uh, and he's sure not going to like it uh, when the brethren instead of talking bad about brother James are going to start praying for him uh, hey he don't like it uh, uh, but listen uh, uh, for every split he ever caused uh, he's going to the lake of fire uh, and I say take that devil hate the devil for every spiritual revival he ever doused, he's going to hell. I say, take that devil. For every seed of the Word of God he stole out of the heart of a sinner, he's going to the lake of fire. And I say, take that devil. For every sadistic thought he ever put in your mind, You'll be down praying and he'll put a thought in your mind. You'll be reading the Word of God and he'll put a thought in your mind. You'll be sitting in church and he'll put a thought in your mind. Uh, that takes you away from the holiness of God. Uh, for everyone, he's going to the lake of fire. And I say, take that devil. But all that say this, Christian. Don't give up. Don't give in. Heaven's just in view. We can almost see the lights of that city. Uh, we're almost home. And what else is there to go back to? I, I hate a lot of things, but one thing I hate, I hate to be lied to. Don't let the devil lie to you. Don't let the devil deceive you. Don't let the devil tell you you're no use and you're no count and nobody cares about you. The devil's a liar. I want to tell you, God loves you. God cares about you. God highly esteems you. And God tells us in Malachi 4 that you're one of his jewels. The devil don't like that talk. Don't listen to the devil. Let me pick on Miss Jan. She'll tell you. Miss Jan had a husband that left her. And she raised three young children by herself. And oh, by the way, in the midst of all that, she got cancer. All three of her children turned out to be professionals. I'm talking about lawyers and doctors and stuff. I'm talking about, you know, big stuff, huh? From a single mother with cancer. The Lord opened her eyes because she was in the Methodist church 40 years. And the Lord opened her eyes through a little country preacher. You probably know him, Brother Ron, Dwight Kaufman. Brother Dwight explained to her eternal security of the believer. And Brother Dwight helped her. And she converted to be a Baptist. And got into the Baptist faith and wanted to live for God. And did. And moved up this way. And 
and got in church up here and wanted to live for God. And this man who was sitting there, Wooter, wanted to be big strapping husband. And you know Janet, she's kind of naive. She married him. He tried to take her for everything she had, everything she'd worked for. Uh, he didn't. He didn't pay any bills, making her pay a semi truck bill and her insurance. Plus, she owned her condo, and he's wanting to take that and want to take everything from her. About that time, the Lord had centered our church. He wouldn't come to church with us. He wouldn't even come and meet with me, would he? And she came and asked me, Brother Doug, what I got to do? I said, you got to protect yourself, Janet. She said, and, I, and by the way, go read 1 Corinthians 7. The husband is to render due benevolence to the wife. The husband's supposed to take care of his wife. Hmm? Wasn't her job to take care of his sorry carcass. Huh? And so I said, Sister Janet, I said, you got to protect yourself. And her daughter is a lawyer, got her protected, and where her condo was safe, and her, her money was safe. And Well, she had friends say, all them Baptists, they'll chew you up, spit you out, they won't, have, they won't let you come back to church. That's only been over 20 years, and she's still sitting here. We didn't turn her back on you, did we? We've just loved you, and we just thank God for you. Through every heart attack you've had and through every spell you've had and everything, we've just been there for you, haven't we? Because we love you and you love our church. What a blessing. So, hey, take that devil. Huh? She's still sitting there. Huh? Listen, once you're part of this family, you're always part of this family. And we don't need our young. We're for one another around here. But the devil, he'll lie. He'll tell you, oh, that crowd turned on you. Not this crowd. Oh, there's some crowds out there probably will because he probably owns them. That helps some of you. I'm just trying to help you, friend. Don't listen to the sorry, no good devil. The Lord Jesus Christ will never lie to you. He'll always give you peace. He'll always strengthen you. And he'll always point you right back where you need to be, the house of God looking at him. Are you listening? Uh, the devil is going to the lake of fire. You know what we need to do? We need to get so full of God that folks that are headed to his direction would turn and head to the Lord. The devil, he don't like it when he's exposed but you know why the Lord gave us this chapter? Number one, to break our hearts for sinners that are going there. But number two, to rejoice. Because we know where the devil's headed. Hmm? So next time he gets in the car with you, next time he gets in the truck with you, next time he gets on you, hey, just tell him, I'm going to glory, nothing you can do to change that, and you're going to the lake of fire. Take that devil. Hmm? Now, I highly don't re recommend praying to the devil and talking to the devil and all that, but if he gets that big on you, just remind him where he's going, plead the blood of the Lord Jesus, and he'll leave you alone. Are you listening? Because he hates the blood of the Lord. Huh? Take that, devil. You know what some of y'all need to do? Some of you need some victory. I'm looking at some of you. Some of you, you've been, you've been wearing, the devil been wearing you out. You've been carrying him around on your back long enough. It's time for no more free rides. You just need to get in the altar and ask God to help you because you, you, you realize what's happening to the devil. Uh, and again, I promise you, the devil's real and oppression's real. And what will help you when you start feeling that anxiety and that oppressive state, just start pleading the blood of Jesus. Just say, I plead the blood of the, of the Lord Jesus over this place. You know what happened? The devil leave you low. Because if he could get under the blood, he'd get be a saved devil. But he's not going to be a saved devil. He's going to the lake of fire. Some of you need to get a hold of that tonight, that he's headed to the lake of fire. And his days are short. And listen, if he's messing with you, it might be a blessing because there might be somebody here that can't handle it. And so if he's messing with you, he's leaving somebody else alone. Uh, take, take that to heart. I, listen, I know not everybody's like me and I'm crazy. 
And, and I don't want to mess with the devil any more than anybody else. But I'm the one that doesn't back down from challenge. Hmm? You tell me no, and I'll, I'll look for a way to find yes. Hmm? Uh, we was down there at St. Lucia in, in, in November, laid out just what we hoped to do, Christ of the Caribbean, and two, if I had my glasses, I'd pull them down in my nose, two Dr. Bottle Stoppers <laughs> that know everything and have built nothing uh, made it clear it'll never work. I, when, when Brother Sammy told me, I said, well, they don't know me, do they? I said, I don't know how it's going to get done, but I'll die to get something done. He said, why? Because you don't throw that gauntlet at me. My Jesus is too big. Yeah. Nothing's impossible for the Lord. huh? God wants to save every one of them people in the Caribbean. Right. And hey, take that devil. Right. Hmm? Huh? So how about it tonight? You tired of getting wore out by the devil? Why don't you come and let the Lord help you? Why don't you let him love on you for a little bit tonight? Maybe tonight, you just need to, you know, the Lord's just impressed on you. You just need to go to somebody and tell them you love them. That might be exactly what they need to help them. Because the devil might have been wearing them out all week. I don't know. But I know one thing. Uh, a word fitly spoken is like apples of gold. And you can be a blessing to somebody tonight. Maybe tonight... The Lord just wants you to go to thank somebody. Hmm? Maybe there was a time when the devil was wearing you out and somebody prayed for you. And tonight, you're sitting pretty good. Maybe you need to go and thank them. Say, boy, I thank you for not giving up on me. I don't know. But all I know is the Lord said, preach, take that devil. If nothing else, just to remind him where he's headed. So I wonder tonight, has God spoke to your heart about something? Let's do business with God. Mr. Renee, come to the piano. Brother Ray, get a song. And God spoke to your heart, just do business with him. Maybe just might be a good time for us as a church family, just tell one another we care about one another, huh? Maybe somebody needs to come in here and start praying for a revival. I'm always up for meeting, but it's got to be of God, so maybe maybe somebody needs to pray that. In. I don't know. All I know is Jesus is reigning, and the devil's a loser. So let's all stand. They're picking out a song. Let's pray, Father, thank you. Help us now in Jesus' name. Amen. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.